Hello, I'm Vero, I'm from Georgia, and first of all, thanks uh, to Tic Tac to invite me here and to give me this opportunity to talk about um, Georgia a bit and about Forset, of course. Um, in, like basically, Forset is one of a kind hybrid uh, of creative agency and NGO in Georgia, and our main goal is to create a space where uh, uh, representatives of tech field and uh, um, representatives of civil society can work together, collaborate, partner up, and create more impact, a lot more like long-lasting long uh, impact uh, for social good and social justice. Uh, and with the, uh, this uh, uh, is done by community meetings, um, this is done by data uh, um, fest PLC and the different kinds of practical challenges uh, to encourage um, journalists, researchers, data analysts, um, activists, um, human rights defenders, and uh, different kinds of societies to um, use or uh, leverage tech and data in their uh, everyday work. Uh, we have um, a very good collaboration with uh, my society. Um, we created AskofG uh, based on Alavetelli platform, and AskofG is a um, platform which um, makes it easier for a regular citizen uh, to um, request public information from state. Um, as you may know, um, access to public information is a constitutional right uh, in Georgia for citizens, but um, sometimes it's uh, um, it's not that um, guaranteed. So sometimes we are denied to the information, it's delayed or it's not uh, correct. Um, so with ASCOG, we always try to um, meet, uh, be some kind of mediator in this process and make it easier for the citizen to uh, request this information. Uh, but no, what uh, also uh, that's ASCOG effort is that we always try to not contain data on the platform. We always try to make it in a data story. Uh, so uh, bigger public, wider audience knows about the um, information we gather uh, through the data we requested. Um, or nowadays, uh, ASCOG hosts uh, more than 1,000 data sets and up to 140 uh, storytelling or data visualization products uh, was created and distributed to a mass audience by journalists, researchers, uh, activists, and the topics are mm, uh, very diverse, starting from corruption, transparency, Russian occupation, gender equality, um, you know, violence, and so on and so forth. And um, uh, I wanted to share one story how uh, data requested through ASCOG became a pretty big, oh my God, I'm sorry, pretty big <laughs> uh, story um, for national media, for different media outlets. Uh, when we uh, found out that uh, the whole investigative uh, uh, technology that is used by Internal Affairs of Georgia is a uh, uh, Kremlin uh, connected Russian, Russian AI systems. And we're talking about biometric uh, information, face recognition, the recognition of protesters um, being at the protests, their movement, uh, fingerprints, and uh, personal data like that. Uh, and um, you can imagine how vulnerable this makes, um, uh, this is for cyber threats, uh, these kinds of personal information of citizens of the country. So um, uh, this is a one of the stories that came out uh, through uh, ASCOG, but uh, how we do it. The main thing is that we always try to encourage it. We always try to encourage uh, doing data stories around data and making more popular to read, more, more popular uh, and engaging to uh, get to know more about what the state does. Um, this is done by hackathons, data storytelling, and data viz um, uh, contests, uh, community meetings, uh, mentorship sessions for junior journalists or researchers or, or data enthusiasts, and so on. Another uh, very good experience we have back in Georgia and in Forsyth is um, 
boot camps uh, with different um, partners uh, and one of them uh, was counter disinformation boot camp uh, where uh, 50 high level journalists were equipped with three AI tools and I'm gonna tell you about the tools they were equipped with. Um, uh, these tools were created by Georgian tech community and um, uh, these tools were helping journalists to detect disinformation and to identify propaganda. Uh, nine investigations were produced by journalists featured in mainstream media in these in the framework of this bootcamp. Uh, the tools, um, one of them was data vision, uh, which extracts data from publicly available hard to reach data sources, such as business registry, uh, cadastral maps, and business tender databases to uncover connections between people, companies, and assets. And yesterday, Marianne Baron was uh, talking about these kinds of connections, and it was uh, named as one of the red flag. Uh, for politicians, for example, to have this kind of, and their family members to have these kinds of strong connections uh, with um, business and with uh, this uh, contractual work, so with the state. And um, this tool actually helps to identify that. Uh, another one was media speech, uh, which provides the transcription of audio and video content in Georgian. This may not sound that cool for English speaking audience uh, uh, because uh, uh, lots of AI tools uh, can uh, do that in English, but in Georgian it's, uh, it's very hard. Uh, because Georgia is a Georgian is a pretty unique language. We are only three million people talks in, who talks in Georgian, and we needed this uh, for Georgian exclusively. And this tool is pretty cool because of that. Uh, and uh, the third one was IBEX. Uh, which is using MLM to, uh, to analyze harmful behavior, uh, including hate speech and disinformation on social media, and creates dashboards of uh, data visualizations. And some of the um, stories, um, data stories that were created uh, during the using these uh, uh, tools. For example, it was about Karabakh conflict, conflict uh, through the Georgian lens. It was about Russian soft power, Russian propaganda, um, uh, different political propagandist media outlets back in Georgia. Uh, how the ruling party. Uh, and pat patriarchy and government's entire Western, Western narratives link with each other uh, and stuff like that. Uh, another uh, platform that I wanted to talk about is Data for Crisis. Um, uh, this is a social listening platform uh, uh, which, for which I want to give you some uh, background information so you un better understand why we decided that this was very needed. After uh, the war broke out in Ukraine, um, uh, we had a huge uh, wave of uh, Russian migrants in Georgia. And um, basically, at some point, it got so out of hand that um, uh, they uh, just didn't assimilate with the society, but they gentrified the uh, country. And it, it was, uh, mm, you could see it on uh, the crisis of the um, the lot of rents and uh, property, uh, prices of uh, food, like everything, every kind of economic fluctuation started around uh, the, to accommodate Russian prices, uh, Russian um, citizens um, the price uh, range. Uh, and with this, um, with this uh, in mind, uh, state would not reveal any kind of data. What was the um, amount of migrants uh, visiting country? What was the amount of property they were buying or businesses they were opening? So this was something that needed to be done to have a better any picture about the situation in Georgia. Uh, so with this platform, uh, this platform enabled journalists to monitor, track, and analyze social media conversations from two communities. Uh, one of them is uh, Russian migrants residing in Georgia and then the Georgian community. Uh, the platform has over 4 million data points. There are comprehensive sentiment, emotional, topic, and keyword analysis, as well as correlation analysis. And 15 high-level journalists developed nine widely distributed investigations based on data for crisis. And another thing that we do uh, back in Forset, and we try to do it more, is gamification. Uh, to um, make, um, first, investigation and um, counter-disinformation actions uh, more 
engaging and also getting information, reading about stuff, also more engaging. Um, I wanted to share information about three games that eight students and junior journalists in investigating this information. This one is an um, online game which was created for Media Development Foundation in Georgia uh, with the objective to have a player identify geolocation by observing details on photos. As we know, fake news uh, uh, is uh, um, spread with uh, um, image uh, distortion a lot of times. And uh, this uh, game would, uh, was uh, um, aiding that to uh, um, uh, fight disinformation with using images. Now, another one was uh, uh, this game, which gives a player an opportunity to independently build a story and publish it, seek sources, verify facts, balance opinions. And what's more important, most important in this game is that they can test them, themselves whether they are a tolerant or intolerant reporter. And the third one, my favorite one, is a Quack Hunter, is a uh, the game uh, platform to hunt down fake news. Uh, it helps fact-checking organizations to communicate fact-checked information to users in an engaging way. And what now? These all the, all the stories I just shared were from the past, not the far away past, but past. And uh, what do we do now? Um, as um, you may know, this year is an election year in Georgia. In October, we have a parliamentary elections. And uh, you, um, even in the la beginning of the last year, we um, decided because of the 2023 uh, March protests and the Gen Z's role in these protests and uh, they are um, uh, how they showed themselves as a very politically active and engaged force, we decided that we wanted to work for and uh, with uh, Generation Z um, this year. Uh, with this in mind, um, first of all, we needed to know what are the challenges and issues and needs that Generation Z has in Georgia. And for that, we... Um, we did focus group research um, about all of this and also about Georgia's uh, political, social, and economic realities of the viewpoints of Gen Z. And another thing we researched was that how Gen Z receives information, who do they listen to? And we found out that we made sure, because we knew that already, that Gen Z does not listen to politicians, does not uh, watch TV. They listen to content creators, AKA influencers. And we decided the name Influencing Democracy comes from that, that we decided that to collaborate and partner up with um, micro, mid and uh, macro influencers in Georgia uh, to um, encourage Gen Z to vote this year. And uh, these, uh, the amount of Gen Z to vote is um, 400,000. And uh, keeping in mind that Georgia's whole population is 3 million, this is a pretty big number. And uh, this, uh, with millennial uh, generation, is the first year in Georgia's history where millennials and Gen Z create majority of the country. And, uh, they mean, and uh, millennials and Gen Z are most for European, pro EU uh, integration. Um, generations. So it's a very big hopeful uh, change. And um, as you also may know, we have a bit of crisis in Georgia right now. Uh, it started last year, actually it started years ago, but it became stronger and stronger last year when uh, Georgian Dream, the ruling party, decided to adopt uh, a Russia-inspired uh, foreign agents law in Georgia. Uh, last year it um, became the reason of the huge protests and rallies. And with that, uh, Georgian Dream decided to withdraw the process of adoption of the law. But uh, this year, in the beginning of this year, in February, a uh, ruling party um, st started to adopt constitutional changes against LGBT propaganda uh, in Georgia. Then they brought back the Russian law. Uh, and they also adopted offshore account law in Georgia. So they started um, uh, very not democratic and authoritarian processes very fast before the elections. Uh, and also their, uh, the um, anti-Western rhetoric in their uh, speeches and public announcements became stronger and stronger and more vivid. Um, 
except standing at the protests and being water cannoned and tear gassed, we also work in offices whenever that's possible. And um, uh, we always try to stay in this framework. We always do our works and that, that is evidence-based, data-driven um, activism too. And in, the, in, this, in this process, since, the, since last year, we try to do data visualizations, data analysis, and uh, spread this data-based information about ongoing political processes. And other than that, we always uh, try to support uh, uh, independent media outlets, um, especially online media and different NGOs to um, use data and to uh, leverage data in a way that it's more trust the information they share than they spread about uh, these processes are more trustworthy and stands uh, on more evidence. I think that's it from me. Thank you.